Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. We used to play the alphabet game. Whenever my family would go on a long trip, we would play that game to help keep the children occupied. The one where you watch roadside signs and billboards and so on to find the next letter of the alphabet and see who could get through the alphabet first. Of course, some of the hard letters like Q and Z and others might cause long stretches of highway to pass before those letters were found. I used to think that if a trucking company really wanted to be kind to families, on the back door of their trucks they ought to put, if you are playing the alphabet game, here's the letter Q, or one of the other hard to find letters. It always seemed to me that it would be a low cost way to become known as a family friendly company. I think about that game and taking those trips when I began to think about the book of Numbers. This week we are talking, taking something of an overview of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament. Numbers is one of those books that, like Leviticus, is kind of a slog to read through. Something like those long empty stretches of highway when you're looking for a J or a K and can't find one anywhere to move ahead in the game. Yesterday we looked at Leviticus, which primarily gives instructions to the priests and Levites for how to do things in the tabernacle. As we move into Numbers, perhaps the best way to say it is that we are back on the road, journeying to the Promised Land. The Hebrew name for this book means, In the Desert, and the name we know it by, Numbers, comes from the many lists of books and numbers of people included in it. Numbers describes the journey the people of Israel made to get to the Promised Land. On the way, they learned how God planned to organize them once they were there, and who was going to lead them into the Promised Land. Oh, if only that were all that Numbers contained. However, there's more. Numbers also outlines the rebellious side of the people, and far too often what is described sounds pretty familiar. I think it's refreshing to discover that the Bible is so honest about all this. It's not just a story about God and faithful people. It is also a story of how people fall away from God and God's efforts to bring them back because of God's love and grace. In Numbers, the people complain about God and Moses. They complain about being thirsty, the plot, they plot and plan to get rid of Moses and Aaron, and after they hear about what some spies find in the Promised Land, they refuse to go in. The result of that is the wandering in the wilderness for 40 years until that initial generation dies away. What they learned, and what we can learn, is that we are called to trust God. We are in God's hands, and God will never let us go. Part of Numbers that doesn't sit well with us is the honest admission that as the people drew near to the Promised Land, they found there were already people there who were opposed to them entering. As a result, the concept of holy war is introduced. This is uncomfortable in our time and by our standards. In holy war, the other side is utterly wiped out. Men, women, children, flocks, herds, possessions, it's all destroyed. Again, that's far from what we would do nowadays. But we need to remember that God's people at that time were newly come together and newly God's people. Destroying everything of the enemy was one way to help keep the nation pure and unadulterated. If you're building a house and the foundation on one corner has shoddy materials, the house is no good. The same thing happens with nations. God sought to keep the nation pure while they were getting established. Still, this remains a hard idea for us to be comfortable with. Numbers begins appropriately enough by taking a census, and there we find that the number who were coming into the Promised Land was about 600,000. The problem with a census, as King David learned many years later, is that you begin to trust in your own power instead of trusting in God. 
in the book of Numbers. The people of Israel are on the move. They are headed into the future that God holds for them. As are we. Thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God.